Um, cool. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for the introduction. Um, I'm Howie Liu. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Airtable. And uh, so I'll tell you the story of, of how we got here. Um, you know, basically, uh, I had founded a different company about five years ago called eTacts. And we were uh, the first relationship intelligence CRM product. So a precursor to Relate IQ, if you've seen that. Um, we would pull in your emails and phone calls and automatically kind of show you who you had and hadn't talked to. And uh, you know, we had a great little team of four people. Uh, alums from there have gone on to co-found a company with Ashton Kutcher, become director of engineering at, uh, at Quora, as well as uh, found the developer platform Parse. Um, but long story short, with that company, uh, you know, we, we were doing this very verticalized product around relationship management. And one of the things that really kind of uh, struck me, um, or perhaps surprised me, was that you know, throughout this process, we were dogfooding our own product and, and using it to do things like business development and tracking job applicants, et cetera. But you know, I would still find myself using a spreadsheet. So I would revert back to a spreadsheet for a lot of these use cases, just because of the, the speed and flexibility that you get from that. Um, and so you know, we ended up selling the company to Salesforce and uh, spent some time there kind of learning about the, uh, the B2B world and, and seeing the software uh, world from a very 10,000 foot view. And uh, you know, I, I had this kind of realization that the vast majority of software out there in the world is not going towards some exciting new technology or, or you know, not uh, some you know, innovative new consumer product, but really it's a reinvention of the same wheel again and again. And that is a create, read, update, destroy interface on top of a relational database. And uh, you know, if you're a big company, then it's fine because you can, you can hire a software consultant or a Salesforce admin to come in and set up you know, one, one of these databases for your exact needs. So it'll meet your exact data model. Um, but if you're a low end user, if you're an individual or a small team, um, then you really don't have this option. And so instead, the default go to uh, product is a spreadsheet. Um, so here's a quote from uh, Butler Lamson, who's one of the uh, founding members of Xerox Park. And you know, I think this really describes the state of the software world today, where you know, for most people out there, when you're an individual that's not a programmer, you have the option of using you know, really kind of rigid verticalized tools. Um, or, you know, and, and you're basically doing push buttons um, to, to accomplish what you want. Um, but otherwise, you know, except for spreadsheets, you don't really have kind of a Lego block kit to create exactly the software that you want to solve your real problems. Um, and that's where Airtable really comes in. Uh, so spreadsheets are, are a pretty bad tool for these organizational use cases. Um, you know, they were originally meant for numerical analysis and financial modeling. If you go back and look at the original launch articles for VisiCalc or Lotus123, they actually never once mention you know, the idea of using it to track things like sales leads or you know, job applicants or wedding planning. Um, and instead, it's entirely built around kind of formulas and, and calculations. Um, but the truth is that you know, over time, um, you know, starting out as the original killer productivity app for personal computers, uh, spreadsheets have only grown and evolved um, to expand more and more of kind of uh, all the other use cases that are more organizational and, and list making oriented. Um, so we did a lot of, uh, we had a lot of conversations with people um, vested in this space, uh, such as Adam Bosworth who created MS Access, as well as the first uh, database um, graphical interface. And uh, as well as Steven Sanofsky, who headed up Office for, for some time. And um, you know, we, we heard this repeated sentiment echoed, uh, which was that 90% of spreadsheets are not used for kind of their intended purpose of numerical analysis, but really you know, they're used as a makeshift database. Um, and so things get really messy in this context where you have long notes fields that kind of bloat up rows. You, uh, you, know, you can't attach files to this. You can't link different tables together of contacts and companies or, or that kind of thing. And so you know, it, it's kind of this really uh, hackish makeshift solution that's filling in the gap today, um, but is, is creating a lot of pain for many people. Um, so I'll show you Airtable in just a second. And uh, one of the things that we wanted to do was really emphasize kind of a cross-platform interface for our product. So you know, if you've ever tried to use a spreadsheet on mobile devices, it's especially painful. So you know, it's almost unusable. You're pinching and zooming, and there's little you know, text. Uh, you know, when you try to tap into text cells, it messes up the formatting, and you basically can't use it um, effectively on mobile at all. And you know, for, for us, uh, if you look at Airtable, on the right side, I have a projection of my iPhone screen. And on the left side, we have what the desktop interface looks like. So at first glance, you know, the desktop interface kind of looks like a spreadsheet. It has the basic constructs of cells, rows, columns. You can very rapidly manipulate it with you know, the, the same keyboard shortcuts that you're used to on desktop. 
Um, but on mobile, we've basically taken every record and formatted it into a very neatly tappable card. And so, you know, for instance, you can scroll around. Um, in this case, this data is actually a product catalog for an interior design firm. And this is actually uh, based off of a real world customer that we have using Airtable. Um, so, you know, if you tap onto the Barcelona chair, you can see all the images uh, expanded out. You don't lose the forest in the trees. Um, and you get specialized inputs that are optimized for the iPhone. So you can tap um, these multiple choice options very easily, check boxes, uh, numerical inputs are optimized for touch, um, and so on. Um, and it's not just uh, data edit that you can do on, on the iPhone. We also really wanted to design an interface where you could perform schema changes. So if you're going around and, and building your own kind of app from scratch, um, you can go into a card and basically add your own field um, and thus change the schema of the data that you're modeling. And so in this case, you know, if we wanted to add a field that keeps track of invention date of this um, product item, you, know, you could do so uh, just by tapping into this and then choosing the date type. Um, and so now you have uh, a new field basically on the, um, on the card that you added, as well as all other cards in this table. Um, one interesting thing that we did for, for Airtable was that you know, we very quickly realized that one of the things that makes databases so unfamiliar and scary to most people is that you know, a lot of the things that you're used to with spreadsheets, the ability to undo any change that you make that's destructive, um, the ability to very quickly and, and uh, you know, malleably model the, the data that you want um, becomes a lot harder in databases where you have a completely separate you know, schema editing interface or, or just a very uh, difficult to use um, interface to, to, uh, to change the structure of your data. Um, and so in Airtable, we spent a lot of time up front investing in the first real-time synchronized relational database engine um, out there. So we actually built our own proprietary data store that's very much similar to and inspired by things like Meteor or Firebase. But unlike uh, those products, which provide real-time synchronization of NoSQL data, we've actually done it for relational data. So if you make any change on mobile or on the desktop interface, all of those changes, both data and schema, are propagated in real time to all the other clients that are uh, around. Um, so collaboration was, was really important to us and built in from day one. Um, just a few of the other features that we do, you know, if you were to um, you know, tap into or if you were to look at a, a field like manufacturers, and right now it's a text field, um, if you wanted to convert this into a link to a new table, um, in any other database product, you would have to go and basically you know, create a many-to-many -many relationship, create a junction table, um, and then you know, go through all this complexity that uh, really alienates the non-technical end user. Um, in Airtable, we basically, you know, we try to apply this design, design philosophy of abstracting away all of that um, complexity from, you know, the end user. And so here you can go and just create a new link um, to a new table and hit save. And then this will automatically go and create that new table with all the values that you had from the original field. Um, and again, all of these changes are synced in real time. And we also support collaborative undo in this relational data context. So if you look at Google Sheets or Google Docs, um, you know, they support undo in a multi-user context, which means that if I make a change um, to this document and then somebody else makes another change, if I want to undo my change, it means I need to roll back that change out of order without undoing the other person's change. Um, so it's actually pretty straightforward in a simple data structure like a Word document, which is represented as a single long string. Um, there's a set of operational transforms that you can perform on the actions uh, in order to basically make them work um, out of order. And uh, in a relational data context, however, it's a much harder problem to solve. And you have to deal with things like, what if you know, one person changes a column type from a linked field to a text field, and then somebody else was making edits to that field at the same time? And so you basically have to do all these things to, to handle these merge conflicts and, and seamlessly resolve any, uh, any problems that may arise. Um, and one last thing I'll, I'll kind of point out is, you know, an example of one of our, uh, one of our earliest users, uh, a nonprofit called Scholar Match. So they, um, this is a nonprofit founded by the writer Dave Eggers, and they basically connect high school students with uh, scholarships and donors. And, you know, they were looking at a few other solutions, you know, they had started out on spreadsheets, but they were looking at um, Salesforce and, you know, FileMaker and, and a few other uh, database products that would have cost them tens of thousands of dollars to set up. Um, and, 
you know, the important thing here is that we really wanted to give them experience where they could continue to evolve their data model as they went along. And so, you know, they initially started out tracking a few things in Airtable, like donors and grants and, and kind of uh, the development side of things, but very quickly evolved their product, um, evolved their schema to keep track of almost every aspect of their business. And so, you know, the, the intent here for us is to create um, kind of a Lego block of, uh, you know, of software or, or of databases that allows any non-technical end user to go and create the perfect data schema that maps to their business over time. Um, and, uh, you know, as, as we talked about earlier, there, there's kind of this idea of um, a law of conservation of complexity. Um, and what, what I mean by that is that in, you know, in terms of uh, taking on more um, complexity as a developer, you know, we've gone and, and taken, um, done all the heavy lifting and, uh, you know, do things behind the scenes, like create those many-to-many -many relationships uh, on your behalf so that the end user sees something much more simple. Um, this, is a, this is a concept that Donald Norman talks about in um, one of his books about design. And, you know, I think it's a, it's a really powerful notion that um, inspires us to go to that extra length and, uh, and really think about, you know, with every technical feature, how can we take all of that complexity and abstract it away from the end user um, by taking on more of the burden ourselves as the designer and the developer of the product. Um, finally, we have, uh, we've built an API, which I think is interesting because, you know, I think of it not as a API for Airtable in the same way that you would have an API for Facebook or Stripe, but really, um, it's as if every application that you built in Airtable, whether it's used to track job applicants or a web wedding planning um, event, uh, it's as if each of those apps comes with its own API. And so, you know, you can go in and you basically see all of these routes and these tables are completely specific to your data. Um, if you were to look at the documentation and the examples on, um, on the uh, API page, again, all of this data is very specific to your actual content. Um, and so, you know, it's almost as if you had built your own custom app from scratch in Rails and created a Stripe-like documentation page for that API. Um, so that's pretty much it for my talk. Uh, any questions? Thank you very much for your time. Sure. Howie. Howie. Oh. oh, come join me. Um, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll start just with one question. So this um, first of all looks awesome and, and just super interesting. Um, I guess from a business standpoint, how do you even start uh, penetrating the market because you're basically disrupting something that's so horizontal, so widespread. Sure. Uh, what, what, what do you think as sort of the you know the tip of the spear here? Sure. So I think there's two broad ways we think about you know getting this out to market. One is you know evangelizing Airtable as this new organizational tool um, that really lets you do things that otherwise weren't possible in a spreadsheet. So people already feel the pain point of not being able to attach files to records or be able to link different tables together. And in that sense, we kind of bridge this divide between something much more heavyweight and expensive like a Salesforce, uh, force.com license or something like that, and spreadsheets. Um, on the other hand, we also have a number of vertical templates that we've created for the common use cases we've seen on Airtable. So, you know, if you're a realtor, for instance, you might come in and use one of our existing templates to get started, um, and so on and so forth. So there are uh, many different long tail categories that we believe are too small of a market for any, you know, single uh, dedicated company to really build a great vertical product around. Um, but, you know, our, our Lego block solution really fills in that gap and provides a pretty great um, you know, standalone alter alternative. Great. That was, uh, so, actually, we should have mics. We don't have mics. Oh, yeah, Andrew, thank you. Thanks. Hi, uh, Richard Blue. Uh, I'm very interested in the number of different applications that immediately come to mind. One of the biggest challenges for this kind of thing is data updates. Mm -hmm. Are you focused on also tackling that, or do you send people to something else like Tamer or Data Wrangler or something to be the glue to existing legacy databases? Data updates as in connecting with existing live data, data sources? Existing data sources. Sure. Live so data. Uh, there's two things. One is, you know, our API would certainly allow you to integrate any live data that you have already um, seamlessly into the product. All of the, the API calls are, you know, like the rest of our product, um, synchronized in real time. So if you inserted a record via our API, um, that record would be automatically synced to all clients in real time, um, just like any other change. Um, the second is that we are, you know, in the future going to support things like If This and That, Zapier, uh, kind of off-the-shelf connectors to be able to plug and play, um, for non-programmers, plug and play into other products. Sure. 
Hi, uh, Jeroen Janssens. First of all, it looks great. Um, you have shown how to manage data, uh, but Excel is not only used to manage data, you can also, even though I think you shouldn't use Excel for that, but uh, people of course also use uh, formulas, right, to quickly uh, sum a list of numbers, something like that. That's a lot of flexibility that Excel gives you. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Is that something you would like to integrate into Airtable as well? Sure. So good question. Um, I think Excel and traditional spreadsheets in general are kind of a schizophrenic product today. You know, they're being used for two very dichotomous uh, sets of use cases. And the first have to do with kind of the, the formulas and the, the calculations. And the other half are really, you know, much more about organizational use cases that, you know, often don't have formulas at all. And so we're entirely focused on the database type use cases. Um, and we think spreadsheets are a great product if you want to go and do that numerical analysis. Um, in, in some sense, we do support certain things like calculated fields. So we do have a formula uh, field option, as well as things like roll-ups, lookup fields, et cetera, many of the things that are supported in Force.com, for instance. Good. Hi. Uh, what's the business model? Sure. So basically, it's a freemium model very similar to Slack. Um, you know, you can, uh, you can get started for free. We really want you to understand and, and appreciate the product before we make you pull out your wallet. And so there's a, a cap on the number of records that you can insert into an app uh, or a, a database before you have to uh, upgrade to the premium plan. Um, but really the intent is, you know, we think this is something that's useful for both, you know, individuals and businesses uh, and for personal use cases as well as professional. Just like, you know, if you look at Microsoft Word, it's something that students use, teachers use, but then also businesses use. And so it's really designed more to capture uh, kind of revenue from the, the more high-end business use cases. Um, I was just wondering, is there some way that you can try um, get like a trial for like 30 days or how does that work? Sure, yeah. So we have a, a forever free plan that in fact you can use for however long you want. Um, and very much like Dropbox, you know, until you hit the usage cap, you get to use it without fear of losing, you know, losing access to the product. I see that you have a, a really interesting API interface to be able to get the data into your own application. Mm -hmm. But do you have a way for one to connect to, say, some sort of calculation engine that's somewhere else and basically call out to an API and use that to create calculated fields? Yeah, so that's something that we don't uh, support very seamlessly today. You could technically do it with our API by doing a read uh, on your data from Airtable and then you know, looking at the fields that you want to perform the calculations on, doing that externally and then performing another update. Um, but in the future, we'll make that a lot more seamless by supporting kind of more intelligent field types. So for instance, you could have a button uh, type field where you press the button and you've defined some trigger to go out and calculate uh, or perform an API call to perform some calculation and then pull that data back into Airtable. Uh, hi. Yeah, I was just wondering what happens if you, one of your instances or multiple instances of the database goes offline for an extended period of time. Sure. Are you sort of able to cope with that, obviously? Uh, so, you know, without getting um, too much into the weeds of a 30-minute discussion on the specific architecture, um, everything uh, has high availability built in. So, you know, uh, basically every layer of our stack has uh, replication and, and kind of um, the ability to, to tolerate uh, some amount of fault. So um, the short answer is, you know, you might notice a momentary delay in, in that the action that you were performing at that specific point in time may have to be retried on a different instance. But, uh, you, you know, you wouldn't notice more than maybe a 10, 15 second uh, delay on your actions. Uh, and it certainly wouldn't, you know, bring down your, your instance permanently. Tom, two, one, I guess two more. Thank you. Um, it looks great. If you already somewhat heavily invested into Salesforce, not very heavily, but somewhat heavily. How is, is it to move over? Do you have any tools that help you through the process? Do you have any maybe people to help you through the process? Sure. Thank you. So I guess the short answer is, uh, you know, we're really optimizing more for the lower end users that uh, are either on the verge of switching to something more heavyweight or, you know, could never afford kind of the, the setup cost of something like Salesforce. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not really optimized for, you know, we don't have a, a way to import directly from Salesforce at this time. Uh, 
Uh, hi, maybe the last question wanted to ask that, but how does it work offline? So if I don't have an internet connection, does it? Uh, so right now it doesn't work offline okay. is the short answer, uh, but we are working on supporting at least some subset of core functionality offline. So it may be that you can't do schema changes offline, but you can at least read and edit all of your data, and then those changes would be synced and merged uh, when you come back online. Yeah, thanks. All right, that's uh, all the time we have. Thank you so much. Thanks.